We're here. Hey, what's up everybody? Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to Keeping It Real Fishing. It's be beginning of December here in New Jersey and uh, as you can imagine, things are getting cold. But I had a chance to get out today for a couple hours and it's a pretty nice day. Uh, high was in the low 50s, now it's dropping into the 40s. Uh, we have water temperature. Uh, interestingly, something has warmed it up. Uh, a couple weeks ago it was 47 and today I'm reading uh, a top water temp anyway of about 50 degrees. So that's pretty interesting. Um, just want to share with you my game plan, what I'm going to be uh, doing today. I'd Like I said, I only have a couple hours, so I'm not going to try to cover too much of the lake. I'm just going to go to a couple choice areas and fish them as hard as I can for those few hours. But here's the game plan. This is a small place. It's about 50 acres, and uh, maximum depth is about 40, but the average deep areas are like 25 to 30. And I've been graphing a good amount of not only bait fish, but larger arches there. However, over the past couple weeks, even though I've been targeting those large fish, my only bites have come from very large, well actually large and small wake baits in the opposite area of the lake, in grass that is still green and vibrant, very close to shore. Some of those fish are only in two to three feet of water. So I'm gonna be playing that inside-outside game. And the other thing that I'm gonna to try to do is when I graph a deep area, I'm gonna show them two presentations. So in those deep areas, guys, uh, there's gonna be two presentations and you will often hear this in the cold months as a matter of fact i was just watching a video from uh, matt allen of tactical bassin and i think he did the same thing last year i think it's kind of a reoccurring thing for him just as a reminder when we come into this part of the season to you know uh, to try these tips and it's something actually i've been doing for a number of years too the idea is this time of year when your water temps really start to drop and you're sub 50 degrees and even when you get into the low 40s and 30s almost unanimously people will say you're not going to get numbers. I don't know anybody that kills a lot of numbers in conditions like this, but you do stand a good chance for a very, very sizable fish, sometimes a huge fish. And so that's the angle that I'm always trying to play as someone who's really interested in trophy size bass. So one of the things I'm going to be throwing, guys, is the big 8-inch Huddleston. This one happens to be weedless. I'm going to swap him out for an exposed hook version uh, to drag along the bottom super, super slow. So that's going to be one option down there. The other option is going to be a complete 180. Let me show you the other stuff. I just picked up a few of these uh, Tackle Warehouse, like so many of you. I got my uh, Black Friday. I didn't get too much. I got so much stuff ready. But I saw these, and these are pretty cool. Uh, Pro Point Lures Under Crunch Minnow. Uh, you know, it's just, it's like any swim bait that has an underspin on it. But I like that it was all integrated. Um, the wire comes out of the body, back further. It's just a little bit cleaner, cleaner lines than, you know, when it comes off the head. But ultimately, same effect. But this is a little four or four and a half inch minnow. And then uh, also just some Kytex. You know, you can't go wrong. Uh, I di didn't get these swing impact fats intentionally. This is just a standard swing impact. Although it's the largest size, it's a four and a half inch. And um, I have underspins as well as this standard jig head. So I'm going to let it go all the way to the bottom and just cruise it along. Those are two proven techniques in uh, cold water situations is to go with that little underspin deep down there nice and slow as well as dragging the big baits so uh, we'll see we're gonna put both those things in the water and uh, try that deep water technique also throw a couple wakes uh, in the remaining grass that's still alive in the shallows and hopefully in about two hours I can get a bite <laughs> we'll see what happens one more thing how could I forget guys something that I throw in the winter a lot of East Coast guys know about this the it's called the Binsky 
and locally it's it's kind of got a, a reputation here in the east coast particularly new jersey it has a kind of a, a a certain mysticism or aura about it people swear by this particular one but it's a blade bait right blade baits have been around for a long time you have things like the uh from Hedden, you have the sonar these things have been around forever uh but a lot of people like this one they say it just you know whatever just moves a little bit better just has some kind of edge to it i've been fishing these for years and they are uh they're great you know it's just a really nice blade bait this is a half ounce i also have a little bit of a slower fall in the quarter ounce and i forgot to mention this is the other kind of thing that i will absolutely go to in the cold water Grab some fish, let this fall down there, and you just whip it up and let it go down. Whip it up. You just keep doing that. And, uh, you know, blade baits in cold water are a uh, proven technique. And you just you just never know what blade baits. If you look around here on YouTube, you'll see your ones and twos, and you will see absolute giants being caught on it. Because it's that flashy, dying thing, and it's right in their face, it just propels. It's an aggressive, even in these cold waters, this is a reaction strike. When you put it in front of a big fish down there, different than a Huddleston, which it has to trick, the Huddleston has all the time in the world to think about it. Even though it's a big meal, it can think about it as it's cruising by. This is a reaction bait. It's kind of a cold water reaction bait. And you get it down into those depths where they're just chilling, put it right in their face. And sometimes you bring it up and, and you, crack, you crack into a monster with these little guys. So I'm gonna try those as well and see what happens. over to the other side of the lake. I should be minding my uh, my, rip, my sonar here. And uh, we're going to fish some, some timber. The reason being is because timber is great in cold water because it doesn't go anywhere. And that might sound like the, you know, <laughs> the Captain Obvious thing, but as the grass in this lake continues to die, um, those hiding places, all, and this has a lot of grass in this lake, I should say. Uh, school, wow, check out that school of bayfish right there. So all those places that used to be hiding places for, for bait fish and ambush points for bass, as that massive amount of grass just disappears and dies, um, the bass are typically going to do one of two things. They're either going to go deep and they're going to relate to some kind of deep water structure, right? some changes and some humps and whatever is down in the deep 25, 30, 35 feet of water, they're going to chill out there. Uh, and the other option is you can always find some bass shallow and they're going to relate to that which does not go anywhere, which is good timber, right? doesn't matter if it's 90 degrees out or 30 degrees out, that timber is, is always a viable place for a big bass. So um, I'm going to explore the timber option first. And the other thing I like about this, well, this is kind of goes both ways, is there's not a lot of timber here. There's not a lot of laydowns. There's like one stretch I'm coming up to. It's maybe about two to three hundred feet, and that has predominantly all the laydowns in the lake. So for those fish that are just wood fish, right? There's some fish stay deep, some love to be in grass. For those fish that love to relate to wood, that's it. I mean, this is this is the game in town. This is where you're gonna go. So, um, big baits and uh, sunken timber in the cold months is a is a very good combination, <laughs> if you ask me. Uh, my biggest fish actually came off that, dragging the big 8-inch weedless HUD over some laydowns uh, in some f in 41 degree water, as a matter of fact. So we're going to do something similar here with a little bit warmer temperatures. We're at 45 degrees on this side of the lake. It's interestingly, just over there it was 50. All right, so let's creep on in right here. We're getting close. All right, so that's good. We're going to kill the engine. We've got very, very still conditions here, so I want to be as stealth as possible. the 8 inch weedless shines it's just um i'm such a fan of this lure you know obviously because it caught me my personal best but beyond that is it just it it's a trifecta of awesomeness the, tr the huddleston has far and away the most realistic profile of any tr oh, there goes that camera of any trout lure all right what were we talking about a trifecta of awesomeness so the the 8 inch hud or huds in general 
Um, let me get situated here. They're about as realistic as it gets. If you guys own a HUD, you know what I'm talking about. There's a lot of people that make a lot of quality swim baits out there. But Huddleston remains just such a key player because all these years later, the design is, is just still amazing. So super, super lifelike, very soft, pliable, swims great, moves great even in icy cold water. The big profile and weedless. I mean, to me, that's just it. You can get into the areas, you can't get other baits. It's not like a, a mid-sized swim bait. It's not even like the, the big Kitex. It's a truly large profile in the eight inch in the eight inch model. And they can take a clo as close a look at it as they want, and it's going to look real. There, there's no, nothing out there trumps the HUD in terms of realism. At best, things are equal, but nothing looks more realistic. So that's why I think it's so killer. So that's your killer bait. I mean, so many people love the exposed hook model, like the Rate of Fall 5. I fish those, but it's just my success on the lakes that I fish. It's like I'm always... I'm always dealing with some kind of vegetation. I just don't have those clear, open, rocky bottoms. I, I don't. And even some of the places that are muddy, I still feel confident throwing the huddles thing because I'm not throwing it for drawing power. I'll bring this down a little bit. You know, a lot of people talk about the drawing power. That's a clear water thing. And they feel like, well, if you don't have clear water, then it's not applicable to you. But I'm not throwing it because I'm trying to get fish that are, you know, 10, 15, 20 feet away to come over to it. I'm throwing it because still, at the end of the day, you're moving almost five ounces of plastic through the water. You know what I'm saying? Like people talk about the backwards ribs on like creature baits or like the little ribs on high-techs moving water. This thing doesn't need ribs. It's five ounces, eight inches long. And so even though I'm not bringing them from far away with that clear water, it's just it sends out that energy. It's a big, big old fish swimming through the water. When this thing hits a branch, or when this thing hits those, you know, stalks of, uh, you know, brushes down there, it's sending out those pulses of energy that only a bigger bait can do. So, um, yeah, and it's just, like I said, it's just it's played out with my with my big my biggest fish. They were fooled. They thought it was the real deal. Tuck, tick, tuck. The patience of fishing the HUD deep and slow. And I know I'm not going as slow as I should. You guys could probably see my hand. Maybe if this was a 5 to 1, but I'm on a 6 to 1. It's so hard to go that slow. That's a little too much. All right guys, so I haven't racked this ride in a long time. I got a little Cronark 51E on here. This is one of my uh, older rods. This is a 6'6", kind of a do-everything rod, medium heavy Falcon, low rider, moderate fast. It really does do everything. I've slung my Kitek 5.8s on this. Um, I've, I've caught some topwater frogs on this. Uh, a couple of years ago, when I was still expanding my, my rod and reel collection, this took on all duties. If it needed to be done, uh, I would pick this up and it's going to do something else again today. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I am going to make this my little uh, setup for, um, for my underspins. So well, the first thing I want to do is I have 40 pound braid on here. I remember that. This is 40 pound Daiwa Samurai braid. Thin stuff. It only has 8 pound uh, mono equivalent diameter so it's thin. And I know I have this going to something with some shock absorption, but I want to go the, I want to scale down and I want to go clear. So I'm going to put on some 10 pound fluorocarbon uh, for these underspins. Uh, I'm just going to be fishing them in open water with nothing, you know, no uh, obstructions or anything on the bottom. So I'm going to get rid of this. And then um, 
yeah, let's get that rigged up and we'll throw some of those out there. Okay, so now we're going to try one of these little guys. They look interesting. The uh, Pro Point Lures. What is this? Undercrunch. I have the Pro Point Lures. It's called the Bug. It's like a little, uh, like a crayfish lure, creature bait. It's a nice pour. And um, I saw they made these. I like that little silver thing they have on the side. Again, you know, I don't want to make it out to be something it isn't. It's an underspin, but it's just an all-in-one underspin. So it's, like I said, a little bit smoother because you have the arm coming right out of the plastic body there. Whereas when you make them yourself, obviously that's going to come from the metal head up top and just a little bit more exposed. Not a big deal, of course. But I said, uh, what the heck, I'm going to try these out. They look good, and it was on that, uh, that Tackle Warehouse Black Friday sale. So take advantage, try something new. Zoom in a little bit. There we go. You see it has those little fins on it. It almost looks like a salamander from the bottom. They look like little arms. Little paddle tail there. Got that silver flash on the side. And uh, what a cool thing here that they uh, they actually uh, call your attention to in their marketing. You can see like the lead weight there has actually got like a get focus. It's got like a red, orange holographic finish to it. That's intentional. They put that there just to put like a little bit of color underneath the actual uh, body of it. So pretty smooth. Pretty cool stuff. Nice. Scaling down. But, like I said guys, I'm, I'm very comfortable with that. Um, like I was saying, um, or depending on how I edit it, Matt Allen of Tactical Bass, and who I, I really uh, look up to, I guess I would say, he, he provides a lot of truly good information. He doesn't do a lot of marketing or hype or anything like that. Like, he really gives you useful stuff. You can watch his video, take it right to the lake, if it's applicable to you, and use it. I mean, he's, he's a no bullshit kind of guy. So I have a lot of respect for that. And he talks about going big or going small. And one of the things I often hear though in people's videos, it's like, well, you could do this or do this this time of year, or do this or do this. I don't like the word or. I don't, I don't see why the hell just don't do both. When you're on a key spot, you know, throw a couple big baits there, drag the HUD. What does it benefit you to then leave and not to explore that same area where you might be graphing fish and then just follow up with... The other thing that's supposed to work, which is, you know, going from the really big bait to the really small bait. Um, and when I'm in a prime area, I'll throw the kitchen sink at it. I always start, when the area is pristine, and my first cast, I always start with my biggest baits. Because I feel like the biggest, oldest, wisest fish are not going to stand for 5, 10, 15 casts of various baits coming through. So I always start with, like, the 8-inch HUD or the Depths 250, or the biggest thing that I feel like it's got to be perfect, I got one shot at that big fish. Um, and that's not, a, that's not an absolute, right? I mean, you could definitely put in a couple casts and then get a big fish, but logic says that they don't mess up as much, right? So you want that first cast almost to think of it as like your only, only cast. But still, still, before I leave an area, particularly, like I said, if I'm graphing fish deep and if I just didn't get them slow crawling something, why are you going to leave? You know, downsize. To, you know, drag a, a rattle trap across the bottom. Go for the complete opposite. Go from something big and, and natural and, and slow. Go to something tiny and flashy and, and abrupt, you know. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain by throwing multiple things in a proven area. Um, that's that's a, a piece of solid advice I can give you guys, and I hate the word guarantee, but I can guarantee you, <laughs> you will catch more fish. If, if you're in a known area where you've either caught them before or you're graphing them, if you throw various things rather than just throwing one style of bait and then, and then bouncing, that doesn't, that doesn't benefit you. There's, there's, there's no argument for that. <laughs> there we go. We're all rigged up. Let's get her out there. Let's do a quick by the boat little swim test here. Oh, man, that looks so good. And I want to see, because I want to, when I get it down there, I want to reel slowly. I want to see how slow I can go. Okay, so that blade will spin because it's on a, a swivel, like with almost no speed at all. But the tail, I got to speed it up. I can't crawl this. I got to go to like a moderate. Okay, that's fine. Let's start right here. See where our drag is at? I got that braid on there, so I don't want to rip anything out of their mouths. Okay. All right. Let's see if I can even cast this thing. Not very far. <laughs> Gonna have to adjust my settings here. Not 
we're gonna go find some fish. Come on, Sonar. It's me and you. Let's see what we can do. fast maybe another 20 minutes or so I haven't been rocking the wake this is a deviation from my uh, from my plan but uh, we're gonna try it came out here really thinking I was going to split my time between shallow and deep. I haven't, uh, I should have been, sh there's no shouldas, right? Of course at the end of the day when you haven't done well, you, that's what you should have done. But had I not explored this and been fishing all deep, said, ah, I probably should have spent a little bit more time shallow. Um, yeah, i just been really focusing more on the weed lines. I guess I'm reverting back to where I've been having my success over the past couple of weeks, and that kind of stands to reason, right? I mean, why, why are you going to try something new um, when you've been trying it and it's been unsuccessful? You know, keep doing what has been working until it fails to work. So it's just a little tricky, though, with the big baits because my successful days have been like getting one quality fish. So uh, that could just be a matter of circumstance, you know, with such a small sample size, with such little feedback not necessarily that the shallows are better, it could just be circumstance, you know. I could have probably caught, you know, that same fish a day, or even more in deep water, you know, just could have been where I was in the particulars of that day. It's not ironclad that it was a shallow bite when you, the entirety of your fish for the day was this one. But uh, today was such a, a little, such a short period of time to fish, I hate feeling rushed, and particularly hard when you're throwing big baits. There's no, there's no rush in that, you know, to come out and just to chuck for an hour is, is better than nothing. Don't get me wrong. You know, you can't catch fish sitting on the couch. I'll come out here until this water's ice. Uh, stay in a hundred percent better chance when you're out here than when you're not. <laughs> but, um, it's tough, you know, because that's typically my deal. If I'm out here for the, uh, the bulk of a day in better conditions, you know, in the winter, it's, I could easily go numerous days in the winter and not have anything to show for it. <laughs> So anyway, we're just going to try something here that's resulted in some strikes over the past few weeks. Back to that Matt Lord's Meathead. This is in the trout pattern. This is the dedicated wake version. The other one that I've been getting them on is actually a, it wakes as well as dives a little bit. But I've been using it as a wake. So I said, what the hell, I'll just... Oh, that was a good cast. Uh, I'll just put on my dedicated wake and just keep it real tight to the shoreline here. The bites the past couple weeks been so lethargic. No eruptions, just kind of slurping it off the surface. Imagine that, right? Here they are trying to eat this big eight inch trout and it's just slurping it as though it was like some little tiny, like a little baby frog or something. Very half-hearted strikes. But these uh, things have some big owner ST41s and those things don't miss, man. They are sticky, sticky sharp. Come.
got him. Oh, I was just letting that sit, going to another lure. Don't you get off. Ah. Ah. Man. That was fun. <laughs> Let me fire up this other camera, guys. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. How's that look? Okay. <laughs> there we go. Of course, the camera died right before. So, I don't advise anybody doing that. I had my HUD, and I have a lay down here. Let me get this fish, first of all. Let's just talk about that. That fish right there. That's the 8 inch weedless Huddleston. Bam. You gonna focus cam? There we go. Nice. So, uh,. Yeah, man, I was, uh, I cast that 8-inch wheelless Huddleston. I was kind of paralleling this lay down here. It starts in about 25 feet of water, and I was bringing it in. And, uh, put this fish back in the water for a second. <clears throat> and, uh, about halfway through my cast, I saw on my, my sonar, I saw this big school of, of pretty heavy stuff roll by. I think it was just crappy or whatever, but I have some underspins here, and just to mess around, I just figured I'd drop it down real quick and and try to get one of them. And so my bait is just sitting there on that tree. I had just felt it start to come up the tree. I dropped the rod and left it. And so then I made that cast, and I was probably in that cast for, I don't know, 45 seconds, a minute, or whatever, maybe longer. I come back, and I feel it coming up over the tree, but then all of a sudden I felt like a tink-tink, like the tree was pulling back. It was sitting there, guys. Talk about a slow retrieve. It was that lure was motionless for as long as that other cast took me, probably about a minute or so. That was awesome. Let's get a weight on her. She's not a giant. I'm thinking maybe a high four, maybe a low five, but uh, just fun to get an eight inch HUD fish here in New Jersey in December. Love it. Love it. All right, guys, so there we go. That's on that eight inch weedless HUD. This one happens to be like that uh, green green silver back or something like that bam that's what we're looking for that's how it's done just a tasty little snack to the right fish don't be scared of the eight the eight is the difference maker the 68 gets you those threes and fours the eights gets you the fives and ups here on the east coast bam let's get a weight on this girl <coughs> All right, we're zeroed. What do we got? Well, you can call me a liar. <laughs> it's just big because I haven't been catching many big fish this year. Four seven. I would have thought bigger, particularly with that belly she got. Four seven. Scale's legit too. I sent this out to a IFGA to be certified at the beginning of the year. Or IGFA, International Game Fish Association. So anyway, happy to get her at the end of the year. Nice. Not the giant man. Still looking for that one twice this size. I'm looking for that seven to eight pounder, but I'll take her, you know. So anyway, thanks for watching the video. Thanks for hanging out, and uh, I, you know, I kind of stuck to that plan. Only had about, only been out here about two and a half hours, and uh, did what I said I was going to do. I just focused on a couple key areas. I was throwing those underspins deep, as well as the big stuff. And as it turns out, the big Huddleston. I love getting that eight-inch Huddleston bite, man. That's pretty redeeming because I've lost a few on it this year, and it's finally, just, uh, it's uh, great to finally stay pinned up with a uh, with an eight-inch Hudfish. A uh, little off on my estimate there. That's a that's a testament to how many uh, big fish I have not been catching, whereas a, a four and a half to me I thought was over a five. But uh, anyway, that was a fun bite. Most unconventional, nobody could script that, and definitely not something that I or anybody would recommend to have multiple lines out. But, um, you know, they always talk about, you know, crawling these huds really slow, and it's like they always say the same thing, right? 
you can't go too slow. Well, this catch was a testament to that. Uh, you can't go any slower than leave, letting a bait just dead stick it in the middle of a tree for about a minute, then coming back to it, and literally as I picked it up, the fish was on it. It was just, it had it in its mouth and was sitting there with it. So uh, funny, strange, unorthodox, but ultimately effective. We got an eight inch uh, HUD fish in the boat and I'm happy about that here in New Jersey in December. So anyway, guys, that's just about it. Thank you so much for watching and uh, hope to get out a few more times. But if not, uh, wherever you are in the country, I hope you can get out a little bit more. And if not, I'll see you back on the water next year. Thanks for watching.